Let's go to NBC's chief White House correspondent, Peter Alexander, with reaction there. Hey, Peter. Hey, Hoda and Savannah, good morning to you. We want to pull back the curtain a little bit about what we know happened already earlier this morning, as you just heard from the president. Earlier this morning, President Biden joined in the Oval Office by Sherelle Griner, who you just heard from, as well as the Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, and the Vice President, Kamala Harris, who you see there, were able to speak with Brittany Griner by phone. And then later, Sherelle Griner, Brittany Griner's wife, was able to have a private conversation by phone with her wife from the president's study. So the question now is, where does she go? Senior administration officials are telling NBC News that Brittany Griner is being flown to a military medical facility in San Antonio for care and treatment effectively to make sure that she is physically well and to check on her. You can imagine the mental and physical ordeal that Griner would have had over the course of nearly 10 months behind bars. She was there first detained February 17th of this year. We are told that Sherelle Griner will be flying to San Antonio, where she will have the first opportunity to greet her wife. But for the White House, this is a major diplomatic achievement. But as you note, it does come with some significant frustration, the inability to be able to get Paul Whalen home as well. Whalen, a U.S. businessman, a former U.S. Marine, remains detained in Russia. The U.S. says that his detention is unacceptable and that it is wrongful. And now for the first time, we are ha hearing from the family of Paul Whalen, his brother David Whalen, releasing a statement just moments ago celebrating the release of Brittany Griner, but saying, despite the possibility that there might be an exchange without Paul, our family is still devastated. I can't even fathom how Paul will feel when he learns. The exchange of Brittany Griner, we are told, came, according to U.S. officials, for a man by the name of Victor Boot, a convicted Russian arms dealer who had already served 14 years. He had seven years years left on his uh, sentence and it's a significant swap this was a, this was a stinging swap for the US to have to make we are told by senior officials here that the US did everything in its power to try to bring Wayland home as well but the Russians made it very clear that it was going to be Brittany Griner or no one the US continues to deny that Wayland was a spy but his is an espionage uh, espionage case Savannah and Hodia at this point the Russians are not willing to turn Wayland over back to you and I mean, Victor Boot, as you mentioned, uh, um, obviously a convicted arms dealer referred to by some in the U.S. as a merchant of death. Wow. But it was his trade that secured the release of Brittany Griner this morning. Well, we're going to turn now to uh, NBC's chief foreign affairs correspondent, Andrea Mitchell, who broke this story earlier for us. Andrea, good morning. Good morning, uh, Hoda and Savannah. It is, as we say, bittersweet because Paul Whelan is not out, but you saw the joy on Sherelle Griner's face and her words uh, with Griner being out. And I think that it's really notable in this statement from David Whelan that he says that he is so glad that she's on her way home, that uh, as the family member of a hostage, an American hostage, he fully understands the joy of this and that the Biden administration made the right decision in bringing her home validating the, the very tough decision that they had to make. And what a senior official just said to me is, we had no choice. The Russians, at the end of these negotiations, where they were trying to figure out a second person, because the Russians wanted what they called parity, two for two, but they wanted a spy, and the U.S. said, we don't have a spy in our custody. And so what they said was, according to the senior official, the choice was one, meaning Griner, or none. And they were prepared to cancel Griner's release if the U.S. had insisted on trying to get Paul Whelan out. And with the prior notification this time, unlike last spring when there was another false start, with the prior notification to the Whelan family that this was going to happen, and they were again going to be disappointed. Uh, David Whelan says that that made a big difference. He was able to prepare his parents, who were 85 and 83 years old, but that Whelan will not be coming home for Christmas, but happily, Brittany Griner is. It's an incredibly thoughtful statement from David Whelan, yes, and he indeed. does express his joy and relief for, for Brittany Griner, but he calls it a catastrophe mm -hmm. for his brother. Let's talk about Brittany Griner. We don't want to miss the moment here, Andrea. She yeah. has been freed after nearly 10 months. Can you talk about the type of condition she may have been kept mm -hmm. in? I, I know at the very end there, she was sent to a notorious penal colony in Russia. 
No, exactly. At the beginning of November, after her appeal was lost, she was taken from the detention jail where she had been at least more accessible to occasional visits from U.S. Embassy officials and taken to this penal colony. And the conditions, we understand, were terrible. Uh, that the, the gruel that they were fed, not nutritious, uh, no hot water, one bathroom for as many as 80 women prisoners, uh, very little exercise. And this woman is six foot nine years old, had already been kept in a cell that was way too small for her. She's missed, you know, an entire season, 10 months of physical fitness and of conditioning and of, of her career at the peak of an athlete's life and career. So she has suffered immeasurable loss. We're just hoping when she gets to that medical facility in San Antonio that the, the wonderful doctors who have taken care of all of our service members for so many years of conflicts, that they will know exactly what to do about PTSD, about whatever else she may be suffering from and about getting her back in shape mm -hmm. and that that's mm -hmm. the best best option and it is of course near nearer to Phoenix than the US than than uh, being in Washington at Walter Reed yeah. or another facility San Antonio is supposed to be a great facility and it's worth kind of underscoring why she was arrested in the first place they originally said that she was charged with smuggling drugs and she was contending that she just had some cannabis oil that she had medical permission to use for some of her ailments so that was the genesis of why and the context at, at the very moment yeah. That Russia was launching its war in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So many people, timing, Andrea, right. feel she was swept up in geopolitics. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. It was February 17th when they were about to launch the war on February 24th. And the fact is it was less than a gram. There was no testimony, and I watched all of the trial, no testimony in any of these events that it was more than, you know, less than a gram of cannabis oil, medically prescribed by the physicians, the sports doctors in, in Phoenix. So uh, there's no question that she was not doing anything uh, that would warrant this. And in any case, even if there weren't, a, if she weren't being held hostage geopolitically, there's no excuse at all. And it's uh, also, Andrea, worth noting, this is exactly what she said when she was in trial. Um, I never meant to hurt anybody. I never meant to put in jeopardy the Russian population. This is what she had to say after the conviction. I've never meant to break laws here. I made an honest mistake. I mean, that's what she contended. We have Peter Alexander. Who's Peter's at the White, at the White House. House. And yeah. I, I want to talk about the Whelan family because mm -hmm. it, this statement, which I said, is quite lengthy and very nuanced, uh, very generous, of course, mm -hmm. to Brittany Griner, but also it's tough on, on the administration, past and mm -hmm. present, saying that, that the family wishes it had been more assertive to get Paul's release. Does that work continue, or is this just a dead end? Russia saying, mm -hmm. we want you to give us a spy. The U.S. saying, we don't have any spies, and that's the end of it? Well, the U.S. work continues, as the president himself indicated in his remarks earlier today. But as you see, they are facing a brick wall uh, in terms of the Russian Federation right now. Their unwillingness to turn over Paul Whelan, who you'll remember was picked up back in 2018. He is a U.S. businessman, but notably he is a former U.S. Marine. And it's on that basis that Russia has been making its case. The U.S. says wrongfully that he was there serving as a U.S. spy. The U.S. has repeatedly denied that. We are now hearing um, from some of the officials here as this news is breaking. They are saying this is a big day. It is a great day, they say, but it would sure be a lot better in the words of one of these officials if Paul was coming home as well. So that's what makes this uh, particularly bittersweet right now. And we should note, that, I mean, this is this is the president ultimately who signed off on this. But Victor Boot, uh, he is a significant prisoner that the U.S. had in custody. As we have said, a convicted arms dealer, um, the merchant of death, Savannah, as you noted earlier, there were conversations in the back and forth that took place over the course of the last several months where the Russians appear to have expressed interest into one of their citizens who uh, was an assassin who was being held in Germany by the German government. But that was a non-starter in the course of the back and forth. But as Andrea indicated at the end of the day, when the Russians said they would give up Brittany Griner and Brittany Griner, the president of the United States made the decision to go with it.
Peter, thank you very much. Uh, this has been an NBC News special report covering the release of Brittany Griner. And we've learned this morning she has been traded, as Peter mentioned, for mm -hmm. a notorious Russian arms dealer who had been convicted and served about three quarters of his sentence, Victor Boot. That trade has secured her release. She is en route to San Antonio, where we understand she'll be receiving medical treatment. And it was nice to see her wife, Sherelle, up there at the podium saying that at this moment, although there's a, a, still a lot going on, she's going to take this moment to pause and smile. So it's important to mark the moment what has happened today. Absolutely. A lot mm -hmm. of work behind the scenes. Some mm -hmm. false starts that we had seen earlier reports that there would be a prisoner swap. It did not pan mm -hmm. out. They continue to work on it. These images coming to us from mm -hmm. the White House from inside the Oval Office this morning. We'll continue to keep a close eye on it. We'll bring you any updates. More coverage on NBC Nightly News and on NBC News Now. For now, most will go back to today. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.